Hi, I'm Bill from CJ Pony Parts. You may be wondering why do we have a Bronco in our studio today? Well, recently we installed a set of power windows on the boss's 68 Mustang Coupe and he was so happy with the results, he asked if we could install a set in the 68 Bronco that he's building for his son. So today, I'm going to show you how to install power windows in your classic Bronco. This kit is very similar to the Mustang kit we installed in that the power motor is already mounted to the regular, making for an easier installation. It includes these switches that have threads that will fit a stock crank. That way you're not using an aftermarket power window switch. You simply push the crank up and down. That will make your windows go up and down. The kit includes both sides, two switches, all the wiring necessary for installation. For this installation, you need a Phillips head screwdriver, quarter inch ratchet, 3 8 socket, pick, marker, drill, 8 inch drill bit, 1364 drill bit, 7 8 uni bit, wire crimpers, wire strippers, inline fuse, test leads, some extra primary wire, flashlight, and safety glasses. Well obviously we know how to do this on a Mustang, I can't say I've ever done it on a Bronco before. So we're going to start by pulling off the door panel, we're going to take a look at how the window works, then start taking it apart. We're going to start by rolling the window up so we can see the channel. There we go. Here's where the regulator actually connects to the channel, which puts the window up. We're going to disconnect the roller between the regulator and the channel. That allows us to separate the two of them. A little clip on the back side. Separate the regulator from the window. Now we have the regulator separated from the window channel. We're going to move the four screws that hold the regulator to our door. Now we're ready to install the regulator and motor assembly. You may notice we cut this piece out here. It wasn't cut in the introduction, but we found with the new style switches, this will have to be cut out for proper clearance. All models that ship from now on will have it cut out, so you won't have to worry about it. The bolts in hand tight just to hold everything in place. I'll tighten everything up. The mounting screws for this switch are actually located on the back side of the switch, so we're going to remove those first. Now we're going to remove the back of the switch so we can use it as a template for drilling our holes. Carefully remove the back, place the switch aside. Now we're going to line this up. This hole here in the back is where the actual piece comes through to connect our crank to, so you want to get that pretty much in the center. I'll reassemble the switch. We're going to install the wiring harness before we put the switch up into our door. Starting on the inside of the switch is going to be the power, the ground, and then the motor wire on each side. So red, black, and then the brown or blue. It does not matter which side the brown or blue wires go to. and ready to install our switch. I'll leave the wiring harness dangling and put it up into place. And we're gonna install the plug onto the power window motor. Now we need to lower our regulator down so we can reconnect it to the window channel itself. To do that, we're going to grab some test leads, connect to our battery, 
can connect power to our switch so we can move the regulator up and down. And make sure your test leads are clear of the regulator and move it up and down. Okay, you want to get it pretty much right in the middle. Now we can install the roller. I'm going to bring the window channel down into place. We'll put some new grease in there before we install the roller. Now you want to put the roller actually in the channel itself. And then move it down to the regulator and pop the regulator in. Now we'll test our window. Can keep the wires clear. Goes up nice. And it goes down. Now we need to run the wiring from our switch inside our Bronco. How you do that? kind of depends on how you're going to use your Bronco itself. In our case, our doors are fixed mount and are not going to come off, so we're going to use the supplied grommets and fish the wire through. If you do remove your doors, I recommend a painless harness contact kit that can be installed in the door jam, and that way you can remove the door without damaging your switches. We're going to start by removing the strap for our door. That allows us to open the door a little bit further, making it easier to drill. The wiring harness is going to come through the bottom of the door here and I go up and that side's going to go on the top there. Just want to roughly eyeball up where it's going to go and we can drill our holes. I'm going to start with a pilot hole first. Same thing over here. Now we'll open the holes up. Now we're going to fish the wire from the door through the supplied grommet up into the fender and then out into the engine bay. I'll reconnect the strap to our door. We got the wire fishing in the back of the fender, then up through the dash and out into our engine bay. Now we're going to start fishing it over towards the battery. Since we're out of wire at this point, it's a good time to connect our inline fuse. Then we'll fish some wire from our starter celluloid over to our fuse. Now we'll terminate this end of the wire. And we'll connect it to the power coming off our starter solenoid. We'll install our fuse and we'll check our windows. That up. If it moves freely, nothing's binding up. We're ready to reinstall our door panel. And we'll repeat the process on the other side, and your installation is finished. Our power window kit fits great and actually wasn't that bad to install either. Expect to spend about three hours, you'll be back on the road in no time.